The Cincinnati Reds won the final game of the year and went out on a note. And Nick Crawl had a lot of things to say. We are going to break it all down on today's Locked On Reds. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to Locked on Reds. We are your daily source for all things Cincinnati Reds. I'm Stephen Offenbaker. He's Jeff Carr. We have a combined 12 years of experience covering the Cincinnati Reds. We love baseball. We love this team, even though it never loves us back. And we've taken our love for the Reds, our love for baseball. We have turned that in to information for you. Locked on Reds is part of the Locked on Podcast Network. We are your team every day. And on today's podcast, we have reached the end of the 2024 Major League Baseball season. And the Cincinnati Reds, they gifted us extra baseball and a win by beating those Cubbies in the Windy City in extra innings. Now that the offseason is underway, Jeff, uh, the Reds have a long list of things they need to address. We are going to be talking about where they need to get started. And just because the season is done, it doesn't mean that Jeff and I are going anywhere. We're going to be here all offseason long. And today we're going to tell you what we have planned for you this offseason as we head towards 2025. All that and more in today's show that's brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return on FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets back guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. And where we are going to get started, Jeff, is with that final extra inning gift of a win that got the offseason underway. And it wasn't super pretty. It wasn't a high-scoring offensive outburst. But the Reds had a good old-fashioned pitcher's duel that went to the 10th inning, tied 0-0. And the Cincinnati Reds decided to tell Rob Manford we don't need your darn ghost runner. Noelby Marte. <laughs> you go out there and you get yourself picked off and we're going to win this oh ball game gosh. anyway. So Noelvi does just that. He goes and gets picked off in the top of the 10th and the Reds do it the old fashioned way. They do it the playoff baseball way and they score three runs in the top of the 10th for the win to close out the 2024 baseball season. Yeah, I think we can definitively say that Noel V. Marte is not a fan of the Manfred Ghost Runner uh, because he just didn't want to be that guy. Uh, <laughs> all kidding aside, there was so much about this series that it was like the Cubs were done, the Reds were done. If a getaway day game could be an entire series, that's what that was. I mean, the Cubs won the first two games by a total of four to nothing, and then the Reds tried to come back and like on aggregate like tie that up. But again, it took them until the 10th inning to even score. I think they went something like 28, 29 straight innings without scoring a run. And if this were any point else in the season, we would have been like, oh my gosh. But we were all just like, yeah, whatever. We're watching the Bengals game anyway. But when it came to this Reds <laughs> win, there were a lot of great guys that finished strong. It was a great RBI double from Ellie De La Cruz. Really laced it down the line. And he stops at second. You thought he might go to third, but he stops at second. Then he's brought in immediately by Tyler Stevenson on the next hit. That's got to be something that moving into next year, Ellie's got to realize whether it's taking the extra base, whether it's being aggressive with a steal attempt or something like that. Remember, you got dudes behind you that can bring you in because Tyler Stevenson has been doing that a lot this year. And there's been a lot of cases where maybe Ellie gets himself out and the guy behind him still gets a hit anyway. And you're like, well, if Ellie was there, probably he scores. So we saw that a little bit. And thankfully, the Reds were not penalized from the Welvi Marte's base running error because that was about to be my lead with this final game of the season was look at that. They committed the same bonehead thing on game 162 that they were committing on game one. What are we doing? Well, it was kind of on point. We're going to get to that in just a second. There were a couple other performances and a couple other things that happened in this final game that if we were talking about, if this was game 90 of the season, we wouldn't care, but there were a couple things. Uh, Luke Maley with a bunt single in this game. I mean, we'll take that from the backup catcher. <laughs> Love to see it. Love to see it. And I'll tell you what, they, they may have been coasting a little bit, Jeff, and, and both teams were coasting a little bit. But Jonathan India was playing a pretty good second base yesterday. Yep. And there towards the end of the game, he made a dandy of the play in the ninth inning that, you know, really 
was what I hope to see from him next year. And really makes me wonder, you know, how they're not going to put him at second base. Uh, it, it may be a preview of the defense he could provide and allow for some other moves, namely getting, I got picked off Noel B. Marte back down to triple a moving Ellie to third, putting Matt McClain at short, all the things we talked about, uh, hinge on Jonathan India's ability to remain that decent second baseman. And it was good to see in the game, but before this game, Jeff, there was a bit of a rain delay. And mm -hmm. during that rain delay, Valley sports, Ohio filled some of the time by having Jim day in the broadcast booth, doing a standing shot with Nick crawl. And they did an interview and Nick crawl said some things. And I think he was trying to not say more than he had already said during the course of uh, the last week or so after the firing of David Bell, but he did say some things. Uh, one of the things that just jumped out at me that he said in this interview, Jeff, was uh, when asked what he expects from the next manager, what qualities does the next manager need to have? He said that the next manager needs to be a player's manager, but also needs to provide that accountability and that discipline. And he said, to be honest with you, this team, and I'm paraphrasing, to be honest with you, this team has just been sloppy and we need somebody that's going to make this team not be sloppy. And I, I was, I mean, that's, that's telling. This really yeah. shows where Nick Cross thoughts have been for probably the last couple months. And, and as this team has made base running mistakes and been picked off and, and error after error and poor throws and all of the things we saw from this team where you and I kept saying, is there anybody that's pulling these guys aside and saying, this is what we got to do to get better. This is what needs to happen. The accountability factor that we talked about, clearly that hasn't been there. And that was the, the big, that was the big thing that Nick Cross cited and what he wants to see from the next manager. And maybe that's something, and, and, and while the timing will always remain a little bit of a mystery why he waited until one week left in the season to make this move, it's clear that had he fired David Bell earlier on in the season, he wasn't that enthused because the entire coaching staff was doing this. This was not something that he just pins on one guy. He was saying that this was a team-wide thing. So I think this is also him telling us He's not exactly enthused with Freddie Benavides' candidacy for manager. Yeah. I, I read this definitely that Freddie's going to get a courtesy interview, but I yeah. don't think Freddie. I don't think Freddie's getting this job. I I just don't see greater it. than zero um, percent chance, but less than one. Yeah, I, I think that's probably fair, Jeff. You know, one of the other things he said he did speak to the timing. Uh, not so much why they waited until five days remaining in five games rather remaining in the season but why they did it with five games remaining in the season while they did it, while there was still some games to be played. And what Nick Cross said was they wanted to use those, that remaining time to meet with players, to meet with the coaches that remain on the staff. And I think what they're doing is they're having those talks like Jonathan India said he had with the front office. They're asking the players, what do you feel has been lacking? What do you feel needs to be changing? What do you feel needs to be different? I think they're using the remaining time while they still have all of the players in one place to gather that information while they still have all the coaches in one place to say, would you even be interested in coming back? If we hire somebody else, do you still want to be part of this organization? How would you help address this problem and this problem and this problem? Uh, and they're able to do that without having to have Zoom calls and track people down and, and juggle schedules. They got a kind of captive audience. And I get that a little bit. I understand why they would want to be able to do that, because then what he went on to say, Jeff, is we get back to town today and it's time to hit the ground running. It's time to go look for a manager. Yeah, and I, I think for me, that's the thing that was more important than even the game was was this chat with Nick Crawl is that it's it's illuminating and he's at least talking about it. I would like to reiterate that I still think it's a little weird that whenever they fired David Bell, he made the statement that they were going to spend some time uh, interviewing candidates. He said that they were going to put together a list and talk to some candidates over the course of the road trip. And he definitively said that's not what they did because they're starting the search on Monday. So maybe he erred and he meant to say, yeah, we're talking with the rest of the team. We're getting our ducks in a row and then we're going to shoot for this, this, uh, coaching search, which, uh, Skip Schumacher was officially announced that he is parting ways with the Miami Marlins. There are a little bit more grumbles and rumbles that Terry Francona may be interested in returning to the game next season that's um, that's kind of the big wild card right because yeah. Terry Francona probably becomes 
immediately Should the be. number one, the number one target of everybody that's looking for a manager. Thousand and I, I just, all things being equal, Jeff, all considering all the, and we know some of the teams, we don't know all of the teams yet. I just don't see that Cincinnati would be on Terry's list of places he would want to go. Uh, while the talent is here, Seattle, there, right? there yeah. are some, you would think, because while the talent's here, there, there's a little bit more work to be done, a little bit of extra besides just kind of setting a tone and going and winning games. So I don't know. I, I mean, it would be interesting. I, I know that a uh, long time voices associated with this team, uh, Marty Brenneman being one of them has already come out publicly and said, it's a no brainer. If Terry wants to come work here, you hire him. So that kind of, I, you know, that's unexpected for me. It's unexpected one that, that Francona is saying, Hey, maybe, maybe I, Hey, maybe I might be able to come coach might be a manager again. Uh, and that officials and, and, and public, public voices surrounding the reds are already coming out and saying that should be the guy. So I, I think that's very interesting. Well, I love that we're kind of moving this direction because look, it was, it was nice that the reds win and they send us into the off season with a little bit of good feelings about this, that, and the other Hunter green. He pitched well as well. Uh, the pitching as a whole was pretty good in this series. Uh, but overall we are now moving into the off season, Nick crawl talking, uh, managers happening, rumors happening. So many things are going to be happening this off season. What is it that we are expecting? What is it that we're looking for from this team? We are going to discuss that coming up next. Hey, football fans, you can start the season off with a big return over on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game and you can check out the latest stats, so you can also view live play by play and so much more all on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. In fact, for your first $5 bet, you could look back at baseball. You could look at the playoffs because the two favorites to win the World Series are both from the National League. Right now, you got the Dodgers and the Phillies on top with the Yankees right behind them. FanDuel has the Dodgers at plus 350 to win it all. The Phillies right behind them at plus 360. And then the Yankees are at plus Four fifty. The crazy thing to me, though, is the Guardians, the other American League team that got a buy and doesn't have to play in the wild card round. Yeah, they're eleven to one to win the World Series. I, I, that seems a little bit intriguing to me. I might, I might uh, put a little bit on that. That's over at FanDuel.com. We are talking Reds baseball here today, all day, every day, every week, every month. All season long and all off season long as well, because we are locked on Reds every single day. Make sure that you subscribe to get 30 minutes or more of Red Stock in your feed every single day, because we're going to be with you all throughout this off season because there's so much to get done. The Reds have clear needs on the roster and obviously a clear vacancy in the managerial seat, which is probably going to be the first thing that they tackle before they jump into any sort of uh, trades or moves or anything like that. I would expect Steve, and, and I think this has been our position all along. We would be surprised if it took them until November to make this decision, because I got to believe that they want this managerial spot filled before they got to be talking to players. That, that seems to be priority. Number one, the, the first thing, the most important thing, the thing that they can actually do right now also yeah. because of league rules and the fact that the playoffs are still going is address this manager situation and get, get your guy and, and get that done quickly. Uh, for me, that's priority one. And for number two on the list, if we were going to identify a number two on the list, Jeff, I think that what they should be doing during the postseason before the, the postseason ends is looking over the roster and identifying who the extension targets are. Who are the guys and what order would you want to approach offering extensions and getting a guy locked up, buying out some arbitration years? Jonathan India is going to be heading into the final year of their negotiated two-year deal. Um, I think if it were me, Tyler Stevenson's the first guy on this list. He's the guy yes. that should get some arbitration years bought out, especially given the lack of depth behind him in this organization. And I think if you can head to the end of the postseason, 
and and the World Series over. Final out is called. Here we are. It is now the off season, and they get to that point, and the Reds already have a manager, and they could very quickly announce a extension or two to create an air of stability around this team that gives them a, a little bit better of a standing as they head into then trying to court some free agents to come to town because you really can't yes. start having those free agent conversations at all until you have the manager in place because Nick crawl can say whatever that he's not the manager. He's not going to be the guy in the right. dugout day in and day out. And then by having a, an extension or two in place, you also show the free agents that you're talking to that you're not screwing around, that you're serious about keeping this core in place and putting a winning team on the field and, and creating a postseason baseball team in 2025. And for me, I think that the extension for Tyler Stevenson is a little bit more likely than Jonathan India at this point, simply because of India's agent. And, and the fact that India did have a bit of a resurgent season, they're going to be wanting some money. And while it would be nice that the Reds could buy out maybe one or two free agent years, maybe they do like a four-year deal or something with him. That'd be kind of interesting. But I think that would really... I think solidify this clubhouse if they were able to do something like that, because there is constantly every time Jonathan India talks to anybody about baseball, there's always the question, are you worried about being traded? Are you worried about the rumors? Have you, have you heard anything? Are you going to be here next year? And he's gotten to the point where he's just like, you know what? It is what it is. I can't control it. I love being here, but I know that there's a business side to baseball and the fact that he is already, I mean, he's still very young in his career and he's already this like business minded and sort of jaded about all this stuff. It's just like, poor guy, dude. But like, I, I, I kind of think this would show a little bit of loyalty to the guys on this team. And, and, and I think that the managerial hire will also help that. But if you could lock up Jonathan India for one or two years into his free agent window, of, of him personally, I think this would go a long way to really solidify a lot of dudes on this team and be like, all right, look, they're serious about this because that's what they got to prove this off season more than anything, whatever the moves that they are making. And we will talk about what those moves need to be, but whatever they're doing this off season, they got to prove to you. They got to prove to me. They got to prove to everybody in red's country that they're serious about this because there's a lot of people right now that are very, very, uh, I, I would almost say negative. Uh, about the oper about the idea that this team is serious about contending. Well, nobody in Reg Country really. I mean, uh, that's not fair. Not nobody, but there is a large segment of fans of people that follow this team that don't believe the Reds are going to do anything. And 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 to be perfectly honest, I don't blame them for having that opinion. I, right. This this team this team has not done enough to to earn me defending them or to earn you defending them. They just, they simply right. haven't. So you're right. Some of these moves need to be done to, to show us the, the people that spend money on this ball club that they're actually serious about putting a winner on the field. Something that popped into my head while you were talking about Jonathan India there. Um, I would like to see them give him at least a one year extension uh, on his deal that expires at the end of next season. And the reason for that is that it, it allows them to start the season with him, pencil him in as that second baseman. And then if you get to a point where let's say CES is ready to be your everyday first baseman or France is around and playing really, really well, you can move Tyler Stevenson to second base and trade Jonathan India for whatever that piece is that you're missing. And him having an additional year on his contract would be more value. It would get you more. Did you say move Tyler Stevenson to second base? Did I say Tyler Stevenson? I think you said Tyler Stevenson. I, second okay. Race. So that's what I get for reading and talking at the same time. Moving Spencer Steer. <laughs> Moving Spencer Steer to go. second base. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, and, of course, and, and, Tyler, Tyler Stevenson to left field. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally <laughs> kidding. No, Spencer Steer to second base, trading Jonathan India for whatever that piece part is you're missing halfway through the season and, and then moving forward from there. Um, gets Jonathan paid gets the Reds more value, uh, they should sign him to at least a one-year deal as well. And to add on to that, there's an interesting piece to this because he's actually under arbitration control for 2026. So the two-year deal that they did gave him stability for these next two years, but there's still one more year of arbitration on top of this two-year so, contract. So that would allow them to trade a fixed amount if they were to do that versus having trade a fixed amount. Yeah. 
having the receiving team have to go through the arbitration process with Jonathan India. That's a fair thing. And, and I think it's still intriguing to see that because uh, just the way that the roster moves is th that's, it, it's going to constantly be there as, as much as, as we may be a little bit eye rolly about, you know, potential rumors of Jonathan India moving on and things like this, but there, there's so, you, so you didn't, you didn't really say before we get out of this segment, yeah. uh, I, I want to, I want to circle back just for a minute. You know, I'm, I'm pretty definite that target number one, for Nick crawl is the manager target. Number two should be Tyler Stevenson. Is there yeah. anybody else that should be target to be in your mind? That's Spencer that's realistic Spencer. because I know, I know the comment section is going to be Ellie, Ellie, you gotta, yeah. you gotta get Ellie a deal. Ellie's got to want to sign a deal. And Scott Boris is not going to let Ellie sign a deal, which is why I don't ever talk about Ellie being the target. I just, I don't see any scenario circumstance whatsoever that Scott Boris lets the Reds buy out anything from Ellie De La Cruz. I don't see it. So all that being said, I heard you say Spencer Steer. Yeah. Pie in the sky. It's, it's, um, it's Ellie De La Cruz, but look, Ellie De La Cruz is still before arbitration for mm -hmm. the next two seasons. He's not even into arbitration until 2027. At least according to spottrack.com. And so with that, it's it's kind of like, yes, I would love for them to sign him like a 10-year deal, but that's pie in the sky. It's not it's not realistic. Scott Boris has said it's not gonna happen. Give me Spencer Steer, buy him out. I think that there was a little bit of his 2024, and we'll get into this um as we move through the offseason and really dive into uh, some player performances. But I, I think there's a lot of his that was sophomore slumpy, and he's going to bounce back in a big way next year. I mean if he is not on every fantasy baseball uh, person's list to break out in 2026, then I question what they do. Or 2025. 2025. I question what they do. Um, see, I just did the reading thing where I, I looked at the wrong year. But, <laughs> no, I, I, I would say, yeah, give me give me Tyler Stevenson, give me Jonathan India, and give me uh, Spencer Steer, and let's just roll into this offseason with all of the good vibes. All right, guys, as you can tell, we're talking off season. We are now in off season mode and don't you worry because Jeff and I, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're going to be talking about what you can expect from us, what you can expect during this off season. We're going to get into all of that coming up next. If you're headed down to the stadium today or maybe tomorrow or maybe next week, the best way to get your tickets is through Game Time. Game Time has the best last minute deal. Seriously, you don't have to plan well in advance and buy your tickets super early and worry about all these different fees and things like that that you'll get through team sites. Game Time shows you up front exactly what you're paying for and they're going to give you some great deals too the closer to kick off or the closer to tip off or the closer to the puck dropping that you get the more the price goes down and plus if you're a new user for game time you can download the game time app today and create an account use the promo code locked on mlb and you'll get twenty dollars off their already amazingly low prices check out game time today it's the way that i check out some different stadiums it's the way that steve checks out different stadiums and we love going down to great american ballpark with this but you can get into paycor you can get into cyclones games bearcats games all the great stuff game time has it again download the app create an account and use the promo code lockdown mlb to get twenty dollars off your first purchase download game time today what time is it it's game time All right, Everydayers, coming up on tomorrow's show, we are going to be talking team awards. Jeff and I are going to break that down. And spoiler alert, the award for the Best Reds Podcaster goes to yours truly. Just wanted you to know. All right, Jeff, let's move into this offseason talk and get folks ready for what it is that they can expect from us, what, what the tenor and tone of this show is going to be in the offseason. We're going to remain in your feeds five days a week for the foreseeable future. There will come a point in time this offseason we'll scale back a little bit, uh, but we're going to be here. We're going to be covering this team, and I think that you and I are committed to spending a lot of time on looking back at the 2024 performance performances, talking about what went right, what went wrong, what needs to be better. Uh, we're going to be covering the breaking news. We're going to be talking about whoever the next manager is. We're going to be uh, talking about how the Reds move forward. But, you know, as far as the content and, and what we're trying to bring forward, you know, what's your vision for this offseason? I kind of want to set a little bit of a tone 
expectation because last off season, I was all in on the narrative, man. I was all in on Nick crawls narrative that he was selling to us and he sold it well. And he's yep. like, we're, we're getting the guys. We're ready to go. Let's go. This year proved every bit of that false because there is so much that this team needs to do this off season. There is a lot that I'm happy about and excited about with the future, but there has been a lot of different things in a lot of different ways that you could say that in years past you know, you're really excited about this guy. You're really excited about this guy. No longer am I just going to look at this and say, well, they did a move. And because that move, I'm excited. We're going to analyze these moves. We're going to be realistic about these moves. Not as if we haven't been realistic in the past, but there's been a bit of rose colored glasses that I have worn. I will admit that. Mm -hmm. Those, they're not here anymore. The rose color goggles are off. We're looking at this from a very straightforward perspective. This team needs certain things. It is not a playoff team as currently built and it must be a playoff team next year. There is no realm of reality where we are accepting of an improvement where it's winning baseball, but not playoff baseball. It's far past time for this to be a playoff team. It's far past time for this team to advance in the playoffs. And there's a lot of things that they need to do to get there. And so just understand that we are going to do our best to, to look at the everything from a very positive perspective, but we're not going to inject positivity where positivity does not need to be injected to. We will be realistic when we need be. Yeah. You know, Jeff, uh, I'm going to take you back way back to probably when you were still running around your front yard in your under ruse, 1996, uh, you know, back then, my friend, you haven't had a chance to meet him yet. I don't think maybe have him, we'll have him on this off season, but my good buddy, the godfather of non team affiliated online content, that's Bill Lack. And if you've never heard me talk about Bill Lack, he started listserv email lists in the nineties that Chris Welsh was on that Greg Rhodes was on that. I was on Chad Dotson was on. We were all there talking about the reds in, in our high school years with Bill Lack, who was working at the university of Miami. He would always say on that list, anytime the Reds front office told us anything, he would always say, just remember, I say I'm from Missouri and you have to show me. And that is the, the, the mantra I am taking through this offseason. Nick crawl no longer gets me saying, oh, wow, Nick has a plan. Did you hear what he said? That's going to be great. No, you have to show me. You want to show me you're working your plan? You sign a Santander quality outfield bat. For this team you address that need you want you want to show me you're signing bullpen guys you want to show me you're getting a solid fifth starter you're doing things no longer is talking the talk acceptable it is time to walk the walk it is time to put up or shut up and those are the things i'm going to be looking for this offseason there there's different thoughts on my mind which by the way 1990s i was like seven years old if i'm running around my underwear in the front yard people are calling Somebody but you were on, you were uh, doing that parents. last like, Tuesday. You were doing that last Tuesday. Well, so I didn't don't. drink when I was seven either. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I, uh, but no. I, when it comes to what the Reds are going to be doing this off season, there are expectations. And, and quite frankly, like look, it, there are certain things that this team needs. Is it the exact players that we're going to say? Probably not. They're probably hopefully going to make some moves that are comparable, but if it's going to be like a move, like, look, I'm telling you right now, if there's a day, if, if we, if we hear that the Cincinnati Reds have signed Adam Duvall to help out this outfield, we're going to be like, go on. <laughs> and because that ain't enough. If we hear that the Cincinnati Reds are going to come back and say, you know what? We signed Nick Martinez to a two year deal. Uh huh. What else? There's a lot more this, this team needs to do because I, I feel like there are some built in, maybe even sarcastic headlines that could happen with this team in the off season. And I feel as though they need to avoid these pitfalls because we mentioned the, the folks that are either negative or apathetic about this team right now, those people are the, the that you really, the, the people that you really need to prove it to as much as you need to prove it to folks like us that watch this team every single day. There are folks that I've talked to 
some good friends of mine that are just like, yeah, I don't think I've watched an entire game this year just because they had this feeling that as much and exciting as 2023 was, there was something about 2024 that smelled a little bit differently in a way that they couldn't quite put their finger on, but they weren't buying into it. And as much as we tried to say, look, we ain't smelling it. We're seeing something else. Reality proved us wrong. So we need to see exactly how this team forges ahead. And they've got to do this because there is payroll to be had. We talked about it a little bit on Friday. We'll rehash it as we get into the offseason plans and whatnot in later episodes this week. We're talking about team awards tomorrow. We've got um, you know, the the offseason plan on tap, what we think the Reds really need to go do, and we're gonna lay it all out coming up on later episodes this week. But they have the ability to do it. And if they're going to stand on some sort of podium, if they're going to stand in front of a camera and tell us that they can't, I just don't buy that. And I need them to show me because if they have this roster and they do very little to it this off season, there's a lot of questions they're going to have to answer. Oh, I love, I love getting to drop in the bill lack talk shout out to bill lack. All right, that is where we're going to wrap it up. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Reds. Thanks, as always, for making us your first listen every day. Every day, as Jeff has broken down what we're going to be doing moving forward, and we hope that you're joining us for each and every episode. Click subscribe. Click that notification bell. Uh, take us with you on the road in the audio feeds. We're everywhere you get your podcasts. We want to talk Reds baseball with you all off season long. Uh, Jeff, get us out of here. Thanks everybody for checking out Lockdown Reds for your first listen, first watch each and every day, all season long. Make sure that you're with us throughout the off season and make sure you check out Lockdown MLB for your second listen. Sully's going to take you through the playoffs. Playoffs are beginning after they figure out this whole double header thing between the Braves and the Mets today. And Sully's going to have you covered every single day. Got a link down in the description of today's episode. So you don't have to go searching for it. Check it out today. It's Lockdown MLB, just like Lockdown Reds. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every single day. And hey, we're always free and available on all platforms. But always know this as we leave you, we will be locked on Reds every single day. I'm going to put my Podcaster of the Year award right back there behind me on the shelf, Jeff. I was, I was under the impression we weren't going to share the underwear thing.